Hi there. My name is Hannah Beam, and I'm the art instructor for the Hutchinson Art Center's online art camp, which is where you're at right now. Today we're going to be talking about why do people make art? If you remember a video from earlier in this series, if you haven't watched it yet, you can go and check it out. We learned that art is a creative and expressive activity. So, the reason people make art is to express or create. What they're expressing might be something that they see, think, or feel. Maybe something that they see in their daily life, you know, just on their way to work or school or wherever they're going. Something in their community. It could even be something that's going on with current events or something that they see in history. The art they make could be something they think about what they see. Maybe it could be something that they feel, whatever their new ideas are. Sometimes people make art simply to create something. Random doodles, things like that. Sometimes you create to investigate or learn something. Maybe it's about art materials. Maybe you're trying to process something. The expressive and creative qualities of art work really well together. And that's a few reasons why people make art. The most important thing to remember is that nobody can make your art because nobody sees, thinks, or feels exactly the same way that you do. Nobody lives your life except for you. So you have to make your own art, which is so cool. Nobody else can make your art. So today, the project that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a collage with your big why word. Why do you like to make art? What's your favorite reason to make art? There's so many reasons to make art. Maybe it makes you happy. Maybe you like that it's really messy. Maybe it's creative. Maybe it's colorful. You like the colors. You like growing. You like thinking. There's so many different ways that you can make art, so many different reasons. So I want you to think about one word that describes why you like to make art. For my example, I chose the word fresh because I like coming up with fresh new ideas. So for this piece, I used a piece of construction paper from my background, and I cut out some random shapes from different colors of paper. I even had some patterned paper that I used. And then my letters, I used foam pieces. I like them because they are a little bit thicker, and so they add a different layer of dimension to the piece. But you could do this with any materials that you have. Even if you don't have colored construction paper or patterned paper, you can make your own paper that has a pattern or a color with any materials that you have. You could use watercolors or markers or oil pastels. And so I'll show you with some markers here how we can make our own design paper. I'll do some polka dots, because I really like polka dots. Since this is my own design, I can make it as fun and creative as I want. Use a different pink. You know what? I'll even add some stripes. I can do whatever I want to my own pattern paper. All right, so we'll use that for something. So let's pick out a background page first. So we're gonna talk a lot about layering today. Let's see, I like yellow, so we'll go with yellow. And I like to do mine horizontally because it gives you more word, room for the word, but you could do it vertically and maybe your word can string down the page. So we'll start out by just making a fun background. So to do that, you can use any scraps of paper that you can find. Again, you can make your own designs on paper, or maybe you have access to some kind of like scrapbooking paper like this. Um, you can find these at any store or maybe you just already have something that has some kind of pattern on it. So you can use some of that. I also just have some random paper scraps here. Okay, 
So now we're going to make a background by cutting out some fun shapes. So let's see, I think I want some purple. And of course I'm going to use circles again because I like circles. I guess this one's more of an oval. I'm going to make it like a ring. And I can use that shape too. Let's see, kind of start planning this out a little bit. I also really like zigzaggy shapes. Just start cutting random triangles and start moving around the paper. And you can make a really cool explosion kind of shape. And you get a bunch of little triangles. So that works out. make some of them really big. They don't have to be even. Okay, I'll get those out of the way for now. Let's see, let's put that there. I like to let stuff go off the page sometimes because that feels really fun to me. Let's use some of these pieces that we cut up too. I'm going to overlap that and get some layering going. Oh, yeah, we've got to use our fun paper, too. I'm going to cut, hmm, maybe some triangles. that in there. Let's throw in a little bit of green. Then we'll call it good. Need some more circles. glue this down. So I'll start with the piece that's farthest to the back, which would be this purple piece. Remember to have a cover on your table when you're gluing. Even just putting a paper behind it will be good so you don't get glue everywhere, except for where it goes. is not really overlapping anywhere. But that's okay. Put that one there. Let's see. This shape's pretty far in the back. I want to make sure you get glue on all the edges so that it sticks 
down really good. Even if it goes off the page, I'll still put glue on all the edges just in case because I don't know exactly where it's going to come off the page. But that glue will just dry as long as you make sure that your paper doesn't get stuck to something. Once you have your background done how you like it, here I have mine all glued together, you can add your word. So, whatever your word was, this time I think I'm going to do learn because I also really like learning. That's another reason that I make art. So like today, we're learning more about collage and layering and cutting out shapes. So I'm going to pick, I think I need blue. So I'll pick out some blue paper here. Yeah, this will work. There's some blue paper. And cutting out letters is actually really easy. All you have to do is write the word in big capital letters. You can use lowercase too, but capital letters are usually easier to cut out. So let's see. We have L, E, a R N. So because I'm cutting them out, I'm not worried that they don't fit on this paper. And if you need help writing the letters, you can get someone to help you write the letters too. But then I'll just cut around my outlines. So I'm not cutting on the outlines. I just cut around it. There's my L. You want to make sure you write your letters in pencil so you can erase the lines, though. And with the E, I start out by just cutting it into a rectangle first, and then I'll go in and cut out the space in between the lines. That makes it easier. And a little trick for cutting on the inside of shapes like this is you bend your paper a little bit. You don't want to fold it because then you'll have a crease. Even if you do get a crease, it'll be okay. But you just kind of gently bend it and then you take your scissors and snip the inside so you have a little hole. And then you can just kind of use that hole to cut out the inside of that shape. The bigger you can write your letters, the easier it will be to cut out. You might have to squish them a little to get them to fit on your page, but you know, that can be kind of fun.
So now I need to take the eraser on my pencil and erase these pencil lines. leave the pencil lines if you really wanted to. If you did them in a, another color, they could actually look really cool. So that's kind of up to you if you want to erase the pencil lines. Also, if you're really talented, you could write the letters backwards and then cut them out so that the lines would be on the back, but I'm not very good at backwards letters. Maybe you're better at them than I am. I'm going to erase these lines and then cut out the middle of this one. Because I forgot. So now we're going to figure out where we want these. So you could put these just all in a nice row across your page. Like this. Or you can make them go kind of random and crazy. That's what I like to do. Usually it helps you be able to fit them on there more because you can kind of overlap them. And it just makes it kind of more fun. So I'm going to put mine on there kind of crazy. I don't have the lid on still. So. Look at me. I remember to put the lid on. Alright, so that's pretty much it. If you wanted to stop there, you could stop there. Or if you wanted to grab some markers or oil pastels, you could add even more to this. On my original example, I used some oil pastels to put some shadows on my letters. And to do that, you just pick two sides, like the left side and the bottom. And anytime you're on the bottom side, or the left side, you put a little bit of shadow, and if you're on the right side or the top, you leave it, and it kind of gives you a cool 3D effect. So if you wanted to add some shadows to your letters, you could, or you could just add more colors and textures and patterns, or draw some pictures on here somewhere. Um, whatever you wanted to do, you could do. So here's the one we made today. So whatever your favorite reason to make art is, you can use that word to make a really cool art piece with collage and layering. So, remember, there's so many different reasons that people create art, and there's probably a lot of reasons that you make art too. 
Nobody else can make your art because nobody else sees, thinks, and feels like you do. I hope you have fun creating today.